In this movie, we go over how to use PowerShell to create and configure VPN connections as well as importing and exporting advanced VPN configurations. If you'd like to learn more, please go to itdvds.com where we go over everything regarding a VPN, including deploying a public key infrastructure for certificates for our VPN clients, creating and configuring radius servers, configuring network policies, configuring client certificates, and also how to deploy VPN connections using the Connection Manager Administration Kit, Group Policy, and System Center Configuration Manager, as well as step-by-step -step how to deploy a highly available VPN. We can also create a VPN connection with PowerShell and we do not necessarily have to run the PowerShell prompt as an administrator in order to do that. I'm just going to run it as a no normal user. We're going to use the add-vpn connection commandlet in order to create that VPN connection. We'll specify the name, the minus name parameter here. I'm going to call it connect to work ps1. So this is what the user is actually going to see is the VPN connection minus server address this is the DNS name or the IP address of our VPN server. So mine's vpn.itviscorp.com minus tunnel type. This is going to be the tunneling protocol we're going to use. I'm going to use SSTP. And the options for tunnel type are PPTP, L2TP, SSTP, IKE version 2, or automatic. Of course, automatic just goes through all the different tunneling protocols. So once we create it, we'll see each one of these parameters corresponds to a certain section in the GUI. So we'll see that. The next one here is encryption level. I'm going to set it to required. And the options for this one are no encryption, optional, required, and maximum. The next parameter here is minus authentication method. I'm going to use MSCHAP version 2. The options for authentication method are PAP, CHAP, MSCHAP v2, or EAP. And we have some other parameters here that we can use, like minus use when log on credentials. This is going to use the credentials that the user is logged on with in order to connect to the VPN. Minus split tunneling. This is going to uncheck that box to use the gateway on the remote network. And again, we'll look at these once we create the connection. Minus remember credentials. It's just going to remember the username and password. And minus pass through is just going to show the, the connection after it's created here on our PowerShell screen. So go ahead and hit enter to create that connection. All right, there is created. Now let's go ahead and go to our settings and take a look at it. Go to our network and internet and VPN. And there it is, connect to work PS1. Now to see all the different settings we've configured, we actually need to go into our network connections here. There it is. I'll right click on it and go to properties. Now if we go to the security tab, here's where we specified the tunneling type. So again, we had these different options, automatic, PPTP, L2TP, SSTP, and IKE version 2. That's just a tunneling protocol we're going to use. Data encryption. You can see it's set to require encryption. If we look back at our, our PowerShell commandlet here, it was at the encryption level option. And we specified MSCHAP version 2 here for our authentication type in our PowerShell commandlet. Automatically use my Windows logon name and password. That was this option here, use when log on credentials. So when we specify that parameter, it goes ahead and checks this box. And then we also use the minus split tunneling parameter, and that's over here in networking, IP version 4. If we go to the properties, advanced, that unchecks this box, use default gateway on remote network. By default, that's checked. So if we left out this parameter, split tunneling, then that box would be checked. So let's, let's go ahead and test out our VPN connection here. Just go back into our settings, click on connect. Okay, it connected, so everything worked. If I wanted to remove this connection with PowerShell, I can use the remove-vpn connection. I'm just going to specify the name of it here, and I'll specify minus force. If I don't do minus force, then it asks me to confirm that I do want to remove it. And I just have to type in Y, but with force you don't. So it's removed, and that VPN connection is gone. Let's cancel out all this, and it's gone. Now let's just go ahead and create that VPN connection again here and take a quick look at it. Let's go to the properties of it, and let's go to security. Now there's a good chance nowadays we're going to be using EAP for authentication. We really should be using EAP for authentication if it's possible. And you can see when I select this option, the default is EAP MS Chat version 2, but we have all these other options as well. Like this is EAP TLS, and we have PEAP, which we can configure with PEAP 
uh, MS Chat version 2, our PEAP TLS. So if we need to create a VPN connection that uses different types of EAP authentication, it gets a little bit trickier to configure with PowerShell, but let's take a look at how to do that. And just as a quick reminder, if we were going to use a certificate for authentication, then we'd want to use EAP TLS or PEAP TLS. If we wanted to have them use their domain username and password to authenticate, then that's EAP MS Chat version 2 or PEA MS Chat version 2. And the PEAP is a little more secure than the EAP method in both situations here. Okay, so first let's create a connection using EAP MS Chat version 2. So we're going to use the add-vapn connection again, and I'm just going to give this one a different name. And connecting to the same server, again, tunnel type, we could change that if we wanted to. Encryption level required, authentication method, this is what's going to change. It's going to specify EAP. Now, if we just specify EAP here, then it's going to use MS Chat version 2, because that's the default. So I'll go ahead and hit enter, and we can take a look at that connection. Let's go back to our network connections. There it is. So right click on it and go to properties security and there it is so pretty easy if we're using ms chap eap ms chap version 2 but what about if we want to use this one smart card or other certificate that's eap tls let's go back to our powershell prompt and i'll just clear all this out so for this one i'm going to create a variable i'll just call it a and we're going to have to use the new dash eap configuration commandlet specify the minus tls option and this one minus user certificate, if we're going to use a smart card, then we just don't specify minus user certificate. But if we are going to use a user certificate, then we just specify this parameter here. And then we're going to use the add-vpn connection. Again, we're going to specify a name for it. All the rest of this is the same except for the minus EAP config XML stream. And we're doing our variable here, dot EAP config XML stream. So that's what basically passes the configuration into this add VPN connection commandlet. And again, authentication method we're specifying EAP. All right, that was created. Now we can go ahead and take a look at it. There it is. I'll just go to the properties of it, security tab, and you can see now it's using EAP, but it has the smart card or other, auth other certificate. If I go to properties, up here it has use a certificate on this computer selected and if we didn't specify this option minus user certificate then it would have use my smart card selected all right so i'll go ahead and cancel out of this now let's say we want to use peap ms chat version 2 or peap tls well if we look at one of these connections here go to security Normally, if we were using the GUI, we would change this to PEAP, go to Properties, and then configure this to be EAP MS Chat version 2 or Smart Card or other certificates, and that's PEAP TLS. So I'll just cancel out of that, but if we want to create it with PowerShell, again, we're going to have to use the new dash EAP configuration commandlet. I'm going to store that in a variable called B here, and we're going to specify minus PEAP this time. Then we're going to use the add-vpn connection. Again, authentication method here is still EAP, but we're specifying minus EAP config XML stream, and we're using our variable here, dot EAP config XML stream. Okay, that was created. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. There it is. Properties. And security. And we can see PEAP selected. Let's go to the properties and MS Chat version 2 is selected. Now, finally, what about if we want to use PEAP TLS? So, this one's a little bit trickier here. So, first in a variable, I'm going to use the new dash EAP configuration commandlet, specify minus TLS. And if I specify the user certificate or not, is whether or not we're using a smart card or a user certificate. So this is the part that's a little bit different. In another variable, B, I'm going to create a new EAP configuration, specify minus PEAP, and I'm going to specify the tunneled EAP auth method. And here we're passing in basically what we set up here. And now we can use the add-vpn connection 
specify a name here again authentication methods EAP and EAP config XML stream is our B variable dot EAP config XML stream alright let's take a look at it go to the properties security PEAP selected we go in here to properties and smart card or other certificate selected now let's go back in and look at one of these connections here if we go to properties security and go to the properties of it you'll notice there's a checkbox here to verify the server's identity by validating the certificate this is going to verify your network policy server or your radius servers certificate that it has we need to put the name of the radius server here as well as the root CA that issued that network policy servers certificate so this configuration is actually a bit difficult to do with PowerShell because there aren't any specific parameters that let us specify like a server name or which trusted CA to select but what we can do is we can configure it export the configuration to an XML file and then just import it for a new configuration so let's see that here my network policy server is np01.itvscorp.com and my certificate authority here is itvscorp dc01 so I need to configure it there since I'm using PEAP as well as configure it here again np01.itvscorp.com and let me scroll down select my certificate authority click OK click OK again okay so now technically this VPN connection is configured just the way I want it so this one was called connect to work PEAP TLS here let's go to our PowerShell prompt I'm going to use the git dash VPN connection commandlet specify the name here in quotes pipe that to select EAP config XML stream Pipe that to export dash CLI XML and I'm going to export it to an XML file here just in a little temp folder on my C drive called config.xml. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at it. And let's go to this PC, C drive, temp, and there it is. If I want to, I can double click on it. So here's the XML file that contains basically all the configurations for our EAP authentication method. So we could try to make this XML file by hand, but it's much easier just to export it from a connection that's already configured the way we want it. And just as a quick note, in the new dash EAP configuration commandlet, there is a minus verify server identity option that we can use. Uh, the only problem is it doesn't let us configure uh, the verify server identity. All it does here is if we go to our network connections, Let's go to security properties all it does is check this box so it doesn't allow us to add any servers here or select a trusted root CA and with that type of configuration it's just going to prompt the user and say that we don't have enough information to verify the servers certificate and that's normally not what we want okay so now that we have the configuration that we want in our XML file here let's use the import dash CLI XML commandlet and path to our XML file and we're just going to store that in a variable and now we can use the add dash VPN connection I'll specify the name of it here I'll just give it a new name and everything's the same here authentication methods EAP but here minus EAP config XML stream specifying our variable C and then doing the EAP config XML stream all right it was created and now let's go ahead and take a look at it Go to our network connections there it is let's go to the properties of it security tab and yet we use PEAP in this example let's go to properties and we can see that this box is checked and np01.itvscorp.com is our yeah com is entered in and our certificate authority is selected and it uses the the thumbprint of the certificate in order to identify it so now we're, we're getting real close to having something that's really useful in that we can take this config file and put it on our, our sysvol folder in, in scripts and then we can use group policy to run a very simple PowerShell script that really just has two lines and we can very easily deploy connections to our users with it will become a logon script 
and we'll get into that when we get into group policy with this VPN connection.